And how's it going guys, Joshua LaFemme here, live in LA, and welcome to yet another creative week with Nick Koo, aka Nick Ben Koo Motion on Instagram. Today we're going to be talking about the flicker effect in the ASAP Rocky video LSD. Creative week is a time when we step in, every day, with one of my friends that's more creative and more talented than myself, and conquer a lot of really cool topics. G'day everyone, welcome back to another fantastic tutorial, if I do say so myself on the Illafemi channel. Thank you Josh for that rousing introduction once again. Um, we're going to look at this effect here, which is actually pretty easy to set up once you know how to do it. But, I mean, I can understand why you might think this is a little bit tricky, this might be a bit out of my depth. Well guys, don't worry. This is based on a song by ASAP Rocky called LSD. Um, love, Sex and Dreams. And uh, it's this sort of pulsating thing in the background, the lights that are pulsating in the background. It's actually just a very easy channel processing technique. Um, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna step you through it. You can basically do it with any piece of footage. It always is better that the footage has a uh, nice contrast. So I suggest using footage that's at night, it usually works the best because it will be looking at mostly just the highlights in your particular footage, but you can adjust things if you need it, even if you have a daytime shot. So let's get started and have a look. But before we get started, I wanted to introduce to you this new product we just created called the Lyric Video Creator Kit. It has 20 customizable animated lyric templates that you can easily drag and drop into your Premiere timeline with lots of options to customize your text, including colors, textures, and glows. Not only that, we're including 10 overlay video elements to really make your videos pop. Plus, we've added a Premiere Starter project with five different videos to help jumpstart your lyric videos. So what are you waiting for? Grab your Lyric Video Creator Kit today and start making those sweet, sweet Lyric videos. All right, so we're gonna start with grabbing some footage. So what we've got here is we've got a couple of different files. We've got a nighttime shot. We've got this nice silhouette. Um, and so we're gonna just start with this one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this into a new comp um, and we're just gonna drag that in here. So it just sort of conforms to that comp. Now I'm just gonna rechange the sequence settings. Um, so I'm just gonna go to composition settings and we're just gonna make it we're going to change the time cut to zero and we'll just leave the duration. We'll make it five seconds. We don't really need to look at the whole thing. So five, zero, zero, we'll get you the whole thing. And that's just five seconds that we can just play with. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to right click in here. Sorry, we're going to click in here and we're going to go layer, uh, composition, uh, layer, uh, and then go pre-compose or shift command C or shift control C. We're going to put this into another container. We're going to go this footage uh, two because I've already got a footage one and we're just going to move. We're going to leave all attributes in here and just go, okay. So that's just the footage in there. If we double click in there, you can just kind of see the footage is just all there as well. But we have truncated it. So it's only five seconds of that footage. What we're going to do now is we're going to duplicate this footage. So we're just going to highlight this footage and we're going to go edit duplicate, or you can press command D or control D. And we're just going to write, we're going to basically put an effect on here. Now we're going to go up here to the effects panel. Once it takes a second to load, I don't know why it always takes this long, but the first time you load it, it always has to load the library in. And we're just going to type in color Rama mm -hmm. And we're just going to drag that onto the thing. And voila, we've got this fantastic looking multicolored thing, which is kind of funky. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go down here to the output cycle and go to the user palette, uh, use pal preset preset palette. And we're going to go to ramp gray and it's going to turn everything black and white. Now that's not very exciting. I understand, but look, we're going to, we're going to show you, we're going to get there. So what we're going to do here is just onto the right of this triangle here, we're just going to click in and Oops, we're just gonna click in and it's gonna create this. Um, it'll come up with that swatch, but just click there and this black triangle will come up and what we're gonna do is gonna ramp this round and round and round until we get to pretty much her face disappearing. It doesn't have to be completely disappearing, but we, all we want is the the highlights, uh, just the very bright bokeh right there. And so that looks pretty good. Now, what we're gonna do now is we're also gonna add a Gaussian blur to this as well. So. Let's grab Gaussian Blur, we we'll type up there, look for Gaussian Blur, drag that on. And we're just gonna pull that out as much as we can. We might just repeat the edge pixel so it does cover the full screen. And that's not too bad. Now, as you can see here, this is just on top of the current footage that we have. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch the transfer mode here. So if you go down here, transfer mode, and if you can't see it, there's usually a button down here that lets you turn the transfer mode on and off. Uh, once you do find out, you'll see this word mode, and then we're going to right click on that and we're just going to screen. All right, so that gives us our little blooming effect. So I'll show you with it, with and without it. So there you go. You can see with and without it. Now, even that alone, that little blooming effect is kind of nice, right? Like it looks kind of good. But we're going to take it one step further, and that's putting that little pulsing 
rhythm onto it as well. So what we're going to do here is we're going to set this to zero as the first keyframe. So we go to zero, press enter, and now we're going to hit the stopwatch and click it. And that's going to add one keyframe in there. Now I was going to zoom in here and pressing the plus and minus key. We're actually going to go up a little bit further and we're going to make this 100 instead of replicating the pattern of a heartbeat, right? So maybe that's a little bit faster. So like a boom, boom kind of heartbeat. And so we're going to drag, we're going to copy this and put it on the other end here. So it goes up and then down and we're going to grab these three and we're going to paste it right there. So it goes up. So just so you can understand, it goes from zero to 100, zero, 100, zero. And then we want to, and then we want it to kind of pause because the way a heartbeat goes, it goes boom, 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 boom. Right. So there's a little bit of a pause between the, so if you can imagine the 100, so it goes boom, so it goes boom, 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 and then it stops and then starts again. So that's what we want to do, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to put a little expression here. So as you can kind of see here, I still think that's too slow. So I'm actually going to make that just a touch faster, just so it's a really fast boom, boom. I mean, obviously you can kind of affect this however you want, but you get the idea. There you go. Now, if you want that bloom to be a bit brighter, you can actually go up here and um, make sure that you can actually make the bloom just a little bit brighter as well. You can actually turn this to an ad if you want to be really extreme. So you can kind of see here that's quite extreme. It's a bit much for me, but some people might like that. It's completely up to you. I'm going to switch it back to screen just to be sure. All right. So, um, all right. So that's not bad. Now we wanted to continue on. So we want that to be the rhythm that is going on. And right now, as you can see, it just stops. And so you could, in theory, just grab this and do that and just repaste this over and over again, um, which, you know, is, is exactly how I did it back in the old days. But no, we're going to do this the smart way. We're going to do this the lazy way. And what we're going to do here is we're going to do a little bit of programming. But don't be scared. It's not that hard. We're going to press the Alt or the option key and hold on the stopwatch here and it should go red as you can see here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go lowercase l loop and then uppercase o and then lowercase ut. And then we're going to type in parentheses or quotation marks and we'll go down the cycle and then we'll press enter and watch this. And there you go. It's now looping. So what to explain what's happening here is that I've put an expression here that basically looks at the the expression basically looks at the first and the last keyframe and says, OK, what we, it's doing exactly what we were doing before, which was just cutting and pasting. So if you can imagine, it's actually just doing that, but it's doing it automatically. Uh, so you don't have to keep doing it eff effectively. So that's what's happening. So it's just taking that all those keyframes and that and just looping them for infinity until, you know, you stop the footage, I basically guess. So um, so just to explain, I mean, look, if I move the keyframe out here, it'll actually start looping from this point. So just to so understand. So it won't start looping until there. So that's why, this, that's why expressions are so great. Um, now, that's cool. Um, there are some variations you can do on this. Now we could actually make this, uh, if you want it to be not such a uh, streaky, uh, the, the, just a soft look, you could actually change it to a horizontal so we can make everything look really streaky, which is kind of a different look. I don't think it's a look that everybody would go for, but you can kind of muck around with that blur to make it look like what you want. You could even put a, uh, uh, what do you call a, let, let, we can muck around with this too. So now that property is already there. You can actually put, for example, a directional blur. So let's do directional blur and let's do that. And now we can actually put the blur length up. We'll actually put it where you can actually see the blur length. So right now it's going back down, but look at this. If we can actually twist the angle of the, twist the angle of the blur and you can actually make it go in a particular direction, which is kind of fun, right? So the, the limit, the, limit uh, the possibilities here are pretty cool. Now, what's also great here is that you've also now set it up so it will work on pretty much any piece of footage. So let's go in here and let's replace this piece of footage. We'll try, we'll take this, uh, this footage of night, you know, these, this, uh, what do you call it? this night scene, uh, with the cars and stuff and watch this. Now, right now it's a little bit subtle. You may want it to be a bit bigger. So one way to combat this is to actually go in here and actually look at this top footage here. We can call this or we'll rename this. We'll call this, um, uh, or streak layer. And you know, we could actually turn this off 
Uh, we can actually set this back to uh, normal just so we can see it. So as you can see here, the, the lights are there. Maybe you might want to dial it back just a touch so you can get a bit more uh, of the lights in there. You might even want to clip some of this. No, actually, that's not a good way to do it. Um, we might want to do it like that. Now, the other thing too is you could put a curves adjustment on here. So if we go to curves and basically drop a curves adjustment on here to basically muck around with the black and white channel here. We can actually push some of this white up. So the white is a lot more extreme. So the brights are really, really bright. And if you want to clip those blacks so they don't ever come through, just clip that down that end as well. So we're pushing that channel up uh, to basically, and make sure you put that before the directional blur layer, otherwise it won't work properly. All right, so if we go back to screen, um, you can kind of see here, if we turn the blur back on, there you go, it's a much more extreme kind of look. And you can kind of you can kind of adjust the effect of the um, the the streak according to how how strong you want it to be. You can adjust it here actually if you want it to be a really strong effect, or if, you know if you want it to be just something subtle. Um, that is completely up to you. Again, I suggest making it much more subtle, but I'm not I'm not telling you what to do. But you are welcome to do whatever you like. I mean, you could even use this to do. This is kind of how we used to do our sort of fake anamorphic flares back in the day. Um, you could totally do it that way. Um, I don't personally like this particular look, but you can do it. Um, we'll put the Gaussian blur black on. Um, I don't know why I deleted it, but I did because, you know, I forgot. Um, anyway, so let's go back to the Gaussian blur. All right, so let's just uh, make that. Yeah, there you go. So there you go. You have the pulsating city, which is kind of cool. And that's pretty much it. Just it. I mean, look, you can just put your favorite grade to just um, kind of cap things off a little bit. I'm going to put on the metric. I'm going to use my little shortcut here, which is the uh, video copilot uh, video con uh, console, which FX console, which is just an amazing plugin. If you guys don't have it, please, please download it and use it. It will change your life. All right, um, let's go here and we'll pick a nice little filter, uh, like little um, grade that I that I like. Um, I'm not 100% sure which one we should use. Let's go through a few of them. Maybe this one? Yeah, that's not too bad. It's kind of cool. I kind of like it. Uh, maybe this one. Anyway, guys, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. We're going to have a few more tutorials this week on VFX from the uh, video clips themselves, uh, from some of your favorite video uh, video clips out there. And um, look, I hope it's been helpful. If there's any more things you guys want us to work out, please send us a message or leave a comment below and we'll try and figure out. I might even pass that knowledge on to you as best as we can. And if you want to check out everything that's happening with me on the socials, you can go to nickbenku underscore motion and check out all the fun stuff that I'm putting up there. You can ask me questions or you send me a message. I will answer. Anyway, guys, thanks for listening and I'll see you next time. Please make sure to check out all the videos in this week's creative series down in the description below. Remember, you can get a first month of Envato Elements for only $9 in the link below. We've stopped doing the free month offer. That's been an offer that's been going on for about six months. It finally came to an end, but you can still get the first month for $9. Every subscription really helps the channel. So please make sure to check it out. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And as always, remember to keep it chill.